Manchester United have lost four of their last eight Premier League games without Casemiro this season compared to three out of 19 games when he actually played. This is not a loss, people. This is a smash. Manchester United deserve to lose this game. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the MU stand. This is your match reaction. Newcastle to Manchester United now full time. I mean, where do we start? Where do we start? This is a, a very disappointing game. Newcastle completely dominated us, completely dominated us. Uh, they were all over us in the first half, uh, even in the second half. I mean, the second half, the goals start coming in from Joel Willick. And Callum Wilson, those two were actually the goal scorers in this match. But in the first half, we could have could have conceded five, to be honest with you. I mean, we were playing a shit game. I've never seen Manchester United play like this. This is probably one of the worst performances I have seen under Eric Ten Hag. But it, which is, it goes to show you. I mean, it just goes to show you how key it is. How key it is to have Casemiro in this team. Without him, we just... We just lack that solidarity in the middle of the park every single time we're losing games if Casemiro is not playing. This is not a coincidence, people. It's clear to me that this team cannot function without Casemiro. I know going to Newcastle is not an easy game. I did predict actually a draw in this match. I didn't think we would go to Newcastle and actually win, but I did not expect to get smashed like this. I mean, they've completely dominated us from start to finish you can't even complain I mean this was all about Newcastle Willick had a goal uh, and Callum Wilson also scored in this game but if you look at our team I mean where do you start where do you start who are you going to blame if, if it wasn't for David De Gea I think this could have been worse this could have been worse there could have been four or five goals in this game if it wasn't for uh, Casemiro uh, if you look at our back four, Dalot starting the game, I thought he struggled against Maxima. Maxima had a lot of joy down the right-hand side, uh, and and Dalot struggled in the first half as well, in, uh, and in the second half. Um, the center backs, Martinez and Varane, did okay. They did okay. They tried to contain uh, Newcastle in the first half, but it was all David De Gea making the save. It was all David De Gea making the save. I didn't think we defended really well in this game. We weren't compact, uh, compact enough. Uh, we weren't together enough to defend properly. The team was all over the place. Looking at the forward, Vekos again starting this game. What is he doing, Eric Ten Hag? Like, what is he doing to us? Why is he not seeing it? I mean, I have the same feeling as I have last season about Harry Maguire. He was just starting games week in, week out. We never understood why. And I'm, it's the same scenario now. Vekos starting games week in, week out. I don't know what's happening. I really don't know what's happening. Why is he starting games? Why is Vekos starting games? That's about time now. Eric Ten Hag has to make a decision now. He has to make a decision and put that guy on the bench because he offers nothing. I mean, nada to Manchester United. Up front, he doesn't score. He doesn't create. The only thing he does is defend. Even defensively today, he wasn't good. So why is he playing? And the other thing I want to talk about is why Eric Ten Hag is waiting so long to make changes in the second half when we clearly know the first half was shit. The first half we struggled big time and we were saying at halftime, make changes, take off Wakehorse, take off Big Tomine, make changes. He waited until 65, 70 minutes to make changes and then they scored. So I don't get it sometimes, Ten Hag. I mean, you have to call it as you see it. Ten Hag, he's not, he's not an angel. Like, he, he makes mistakes. You understand what I'm saying? And this is one of the games that he made a mistake, I believe. Uh, he should have never started back post. We had Anthony Martial available. We had Sancho on the bench. We got Rashford. We got Anthony. I mean, we got all these great forwards. Why are we scared? Why are we playing back post against Newcastle? This is not... Barcelona or Real Madrid we're playing we're playing against Newcastle for God's sake it's just incredible man it's just a, a very very disappointing uh, result for Manchester United and let's just quickly take a look at um, the table now I want to show you guys the table really quickly 
as you can see so the table as you can see we are fourth now with this loss uh we played 20, 27 games uh at 50 points newcastle have played uh, have played 27 games 50 points but with goal difference now newcastle are actually above us of course we're not going to catch man city and arsenal that's clear to me but now they just we just open the door for spurs for brighton for other teams to actually get in the top four we just keep opening a door we just keep opening a door and if spurs win tomorrow they're definitely going to go above us yes we do have a game in hand but it doesn't mean we're going to win automatically it just puts more pressure on us and this is not good it's just a not a good look and today we were just not it i mean we suffered a lot Newcastle deserve to win. I mean, hands off to them. They deserve to win this game. And this is not luck. It was not luck. I know we had a couple of sh uh, sh uh, shout outs to uh, uh, penalties, but they weren't reviewed. But I'm not even going to blame. I'm not, I'm not even going to blame the referee in this one because we don't deserve to win. We don't deserve to get a draw in this game as well. Newcastle completely dominated us. They deserve to win. But the ref was uh, i mean unbelievable i mean we could have had two penalties in this game two penalties that var did not even take a look but it is what it is i don't think we deserve to win this game anyways uh you're looking at the stats here total pass 343 400 we made a lot of passes but no penetration no penetration whatsoever no penetration whatsoever and disappointing night it is, it is a very disappointing game by anthony by even Rashford. Where was Rashford in this game, guys? What happened to him today? He just completely disappeared. I mean, I'm not saying he has to score every single game, but at least you have to be visible in the match. Get the ball. Get the ball from midfielders. Try to take on players. Try to create a, a pass. Try to create for other players. It was nothing today. Bruno Fernandes ghosted in this match. I mean, all of them. I don't think anybody played well, except uh, David De Gea, everybody struggled in this game. Every single person struggled in this game. McTominay struggled, stressed out in this match. Sabitzer, no show in this game. I mean, the front three, Vekos, I've covered everybody, man. Nobody played well in this game, like I said, except for David De Gea. And David De Gea, if it wasn't for him, I think we would have conceded four or five today. We could have conceded four or five today. But what a disappointment. What a disappointment. I think... Our next game now is uh, Brentford. Gonna have to win against Brentford now. The pressure is on, people. The pressure is on. But, yeah, people, disappointing. Manchester United have lost. Uh, thank you for watching. Make sure you smash that like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel. And also, do let me know in the comment sections who is your man of the match. I'll say my man of the match is clearly David De Gea. So, do let me know in the comment section what you guys think. But that is it, people. Thanks for watching again. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.